piston and connecting rod inspection and maintenance. If the case of piston extraction only, it is not necessary to disassemble the large end part. Conduct the work by separating the large end part from the small end and trunk part. Take off the cover on the engine frame on both sides of the cylinder to be overhauled and turn the crankshaft to place the piston to about 50 degrees before the top dead center position. Place a waste cloth on the upper surface of the piston to easily discard the removed carbon. Remove the carbon deposited on the upper areas of the protect ring and cylinder liner with sandpaper or the like. To make clear which is the top side, mark the top surface of the protect ring with an oil-based white marker or something similar. Attach the protect ring tool and gradually remove the piston by turning the nut. Remove the carbon deposited in the piston lifter screw holes using a tap. Attach the eye bolt of the top of the piston and set the wire rope. Turn the crankshaft to locate the piston to be dismantled to its dead center bottom position. Remove the stop wires from the connecting rod connector bolts and loosen and remove the connector bolts using the special eye socket and a torque wrench. Fit the eye bolt at the top of the piston and lift the piston with the wire rope and a chain block. Then draw out the piston with the connecting rod small end part. When lifting the piston, Take care that the connecting rod does not scratch the cylinder liner's inner surface. After drawing out the piston, cover the cylinder liner with a clean cloth or vinyl sheet to prevent foreign matter from entering the engine. Keep the piston hung on the wire. Place the connecting rod flange on a wooden board on the floor. Use a pair of snap ring pliers to remove the snap ring on one side. Draw out the piston pin and remove the small end part of the connecting rod from the piston. Remove the compression rings and oil ring. Before servicing the piston, check the parts of the piston and record their conditions. Check the piston's combustion surface and the top land to ascertain whether carbon has adhered to them and that they are lubricated satisfactorily. Check for flaws and abnormal contacts on the sliding parts. Check that the piston ring does not seize and the chrome plating has not peeled off the piston ring. Check for abnormal contact marks and wear on the piston ring. Check for adhesion of carbon sludge to the piston's rear surface and the bottom of the ring grooves. Check for local corrosion and wear of the ring grooves. Check for abnormal contact between the piston pin boss and the connecting rod small end support. Check for abnormal contact between the piston pin and the pin boss inner surface. Remove any carbon that is adhered to the piston top surfaces, combustion surface and top land with fine sandpaper.
Clean the piston and rings with wash oil. Carefully clean the piston combustion surface and the ring grooves, perform a color check, and carefully check for cracks. Clean the piston pin with wash oil and blow air into the lubricating hole to clean the inside. Measure the outer diameter of the piston at three positions with an outside micrometer and record the diameters. If the clearance at any of the positions exceeds the limit for replacement, replace the piston with a new one. Measure the outer diameter of the piston pin and the inner diameter of the piston pin boss. Replace the more heavily worn part with the new one. Check for fretting at the connecting rod joint. Check the condition of the piston pin and the piston pin metal. Measure the piston rings and piston ring grooves clearance. Measure the inside diameter of the cylinder liner like this. Keeping the liner mounted on the engine frame, attach the piston gauge in place and respectively measure the inner diameters at four upper and lower positions with the cylinder bore gauge. Open the connecting rod, large end bore, to check and replace the crank pin bearing shell. Turn the crankshaft to locate the crank pin at 85 degrees before top dead center and place the large end part horizontally. Place the large end part sideways and insert the connecting rod's large end part attachment and removal tool into the bottom side. Simultaneously, loosen the two circular nuts on the crank pin bolts using the hydraulic jack. Set the jack stand, attach the hydraulic jack assembly to the crank pin bolts and connect the terminal and the hydraulic pump with the high pressure hose. Operate the hydraulic pump lever to increase the oil pressure to the specified value and loosen the circular nuts using the jack handle. Confirm the oil pressure at which the circular nuts start turning and check that the nuts have been securely tightened. Remove the hydraulic jack assembly and the jack stand. Loosen and remove the circular nuts by hand. Remove the large ends upper and lower parts from the left and right inspection windows respectively. When removing the large end part on the trunk side, take care not to damage the crank pin bolt threads and the crank pin. Remove the crank pin metal from the large end part. Tap the claw side of the metal with a piece of wood. Then the metal can be removed easily. Put the cylinder number and upper and lower identification marks on the disassembled metal parts. Check the contact of the piston pin bush at the small end. Check for looseness and deviation of the bush in the fitting area. Check for flaws and fretting on the mating surfaces of the trunk and the large end part. Check for scratches and peeling on the threaded portions and bearing surfaces of the connecting rod, on the connecting bolts, and on the crank pin bolts. Check for wear and fretting on the serrated surfaces. Check for scratches and peeling on the contact surfaces of the large end cap with the circular nuts. Check for scratches and peeling on the threaded portions and bearing surfaces of the circular nuts. After cleaning the serrated surfaces, perform a color check to check for flaws. 
Blow air into the oil hole, going through the rod part, to clean the inside. Check that the rear surfaces and mating surfaces of the crank pin metal are free from fretting. Check that the inner surfaces are free from seizure marks, peeling, cavitation, and foreign matter. Clean the crank pin metal, measure its thickness with a spherical micrometer, and record it. Without using the bearing metals, assemble the large end and small end portions of the connecting rod. When the joint bolts and crank pin bolts are tightened with the prescribed pressure, measure the bores of the large end. Let's reassemble a connecting rod large end bore. Before reassembling, clean the parts with wash oil and blow air into the threaded holes. Wipe dirt and oil off the large end housing inner surface and the crank pin bearing rear surface. Check the identification marks on the crank pin bearing, fit the claw into the groove in the large end housing and mount the bearing in the center of the large end housing. Tap the center of the crank pin bearing by hand to fit the bearing closely to the housing. Wipe the crank pin surface clean and apply lubricating oil to the crank pin and the crank pin bearing inner surface. Use the connecting rod's large end part attachment and removal tool that was used for disassembly. While using caution not to damage the crank pin or the thread on the crank pin bolt, fit the large end part in place from both sides just as during disassembly, only this time in the opposite direction. Screw in the circular nut for each crank pin bolt by hand until it contacts the surface. Attach the hydraulic jack in the same manner as when disassembling and simultaneously tighten the two nuts to the specified oil pressure. Remove high pressure hoses, jacks, and the attachment and removal tool. Then confirm the deviation of the serrated surface. Turn the large end bore by hand to confirm that it can rotate smoothly. Turn the crankshaft to locate the crank pin at the bottom dead center. Reassemble the piston and the connecting rod trunk. Securely mount the eye bolt M10 on the top side of the piston. Hang the piston by using the eye bolt. Place the connecting rod on its flange part on a piece of wood. Align the raised face on the flange of the rod part of the connecting rod with the stamp F on the combustion surface of the piston. Insert the rod part of the connecting rod into the piston. Apply lubricating oil to the outer periphery of the piston pin and the inside of the piston pin boss. Align the pin holes while suspending the piston and insert the piston pin. Fit the snap ring into the groove using snap ring pliers. 
fit the piston inserting tool into the upper part of the cylinder liner. Wind the coil into the oil ring groove in the piston and insert the coil joint. Set the coil joint on the opposite side to the ring's closed gap. Fit the oil ring. Use the piston ring pliers to mount the compression rings. Fit the rings with their production marks facing upward. Fit them in the correct positions. Shift the positions of the closed gaps of the rings by 90 degrees to prevent the closed gaps from aligning with each other. Hang the piston and connecting rod. Apply sufficient lubricating oil to the piston, piston rings, piston inserting tool, and cylinder liner with the lubricator. Check the cylinder number. Confirm that the F mark at the piston top and the embossed area on the connecting rod are set on the engine front side and insert the piston into the cylinder liner. Lower the piston slowly and fit the knocks of the large end part and the trunk. When mounting the piston in the cylinder liner, tap the periphery of the piston with a plastic hammer to facilitate insertion. Take care that the flange on the connecting rod trunk does not damage the inner surface of the cylinder liner. Remove the eye bolt at the piston top and the piston inserting tool. Insert the protect ring into the cylinder liner by hand, taking care not to tilt it. Apply lubricant to the threaded portions and the seat surface of the connecting rod conductor bolts and fit the bolts to the positions marked with their identification numbers. Tighten the connecting rod connector bolts to the specified angle in accordance with the following procedure. Tighten the bolts uniformly in the tightening order to the specified torque A. Make sure that the torque mark A on the bolt is aligned with the A mark on the bearing surface. Tighten the bolts to the mark B in the order of 1, 4, 2, 3, 1. Check that the connecting rod large end part has allowance for side motion. If there are no problems, fit a wire ring to prevent turning.